Welcome. I'm Todd Lenhart, Product Manager for Open Utilities Substation. In this session, we're going to look at some of the new features available in the Open Utilities Substation 2023 Update 1 release. We have a handful of different enhancements spread across these five different categories. Anything from Build Material Manager all the way to Database Administration, some User Experience Enhancements, Parts Database Enhancements, as well as some new functionality for importing legacy drawings using the import drawings feature. So let's dive right in. The new import custom parts feature in Build Material Manager provides you the capability to import custom parts and their descriptions from an Excel file. Those custom parts will then show up on your Build Material reports. So what exactly is a custom part? A custom part is a material item that is shown on your bill of material that does not have a part code or a stock code or a part number. Custom parts are often specific to that particular substation site or a limited number of sites. So it's a piece of equipment or a part that is not used frequently. Custom parts can also be referred to as non-coded parts. So let's take a look at the example on the bottom of this slide. Looking at the first record on this bill of material, in the green cloud, you can see a part number value. This is an example of a coded part on a bill of material. The second record on this bill of material is an example of a custom part or non-coded part. Looking at that red cloud, notice there's no part number value. However, there's a description of this item on the bill of material. Therefore, the custom part functionality allows users to add items to their bill of material without having to create a parts database record. Let's take a look at import custom parts in action. For this particular job that I'm working on, I need five different types of bus supports, all in varying lengths. I don't anticipate reusing these bus supports on another site. Therefore, these are going to be custom. So I've put all my descriptions uh, in the Excel file and any other data that I wish to import into my bill of material. Let's go ahead and import this data. I'm going to open up Bill of Material Manager. I'm going to navigate to the bill of material in the hierarchy tree that I wish to import these records to. In this case, I'm going to import it to Rev0 of my high bus bomb. In the upper right, simply select the Import Custom Parts, choose your file, select a sheet, and define a starting row for import. Once the import process is complete, you'll see the data in the Bill Material Manager. Now I'm ready to generate my Bill of Material. I'll go ahead and just go to the Output menu. We use the uh, Run Reports function, select the desired report template. I'm going to set my filters. I typically set my filters by uh, work order, then by my bill material document name, and select the revision. Here you can see the detailed bill material list. This includes coded and non-coded parts. The items in the red rectangle are the custom parts I imported from the Excel file. Note how the part number column for each of those items is blank. However, there's a detailed description and special notes shown on my bill of material. The new link with symbol function in Bill of Material Manager provides you the capability to associate a unlinked item from your bill of material to an object, for example, in the 3D model. You might be wondering what kind of workflows would result in that case. Well, first off, uh, previously I demonstrated the ability to import custom parts from an Excel file. That will initially result in items being added to your bill of material where they don't have a direct connection or association with the object in the model. 
So this is a tool that will allow you to associate those items to objects in the model. Additionally, for those of you that are using Bill Material Manager, another workflow that gets you into that same condition would be using the add new function here. So when you do add new part, uh, whether it be a custom part or a coded part, that will result in this flag being set right here. So you can see how this item has this character. This is an indication. When you see the flag column with that icon in it, it's an indication that this item here, for example, 603, this happens to be a non-coded part. And what it's basically telling me is that, hey, this item uh, is on my bill of material. However, it doesn't have a direct association or it's not linked to an object in the model. Okay, and again, the whole purpose of this new feature is to be able to select these type of items and then associate them to an object in the model. Let's take a look at this feature in action. Earlier, I imported custom parts from an Excel file. In my case, I was importing some bus supports. I'm gonna insert a new 3D symbol for a bus support, and then I wanna tie that symbol to that imported item, which is already on my bill of material. So first I'm gonna go ahead and uh, find the symbol to place in my 3D model. In this case, I'm using a symbol by name. I'm gonna pick one of the single ones here. So I'll just pick any random one here, a single one. I'm gonna go ahead and place that down. And you can see that I've placed that bus support down. When I take a look at its device properties, as most of you are aware, the equipment tag or the full equipment tag or device ID is a combination of installation location and device tag. This is to take note because when we imported the custom parts, some of those I actually imported the equipment tag. So that's going to become an important factor when I actually link that item from my bill of material to this object in my model. So you can see here, the object does not have a part number associated to it. Therefore, there's no balloon number. However, I want to create an association between this object and the item that was previously imported on my bill of material. So I'm going to go ahead and go into bill of material manager. I'm going to scroll down and find the records that I imported earlier. For example, item or balloon number 423. And before you can actually use the link with symbol, it requires you first to have a symbol selected. So you can see that the symbol is now selected because it turned magenta color. It's part of my selection set. Right click on this object and select link with symbol. And in this case, you can see that I'm prompted with a choice. I need to choose which equipment tag I want to keep. So the equipment tag in Bill of Material Manager is Site Station ST72. However, the object that I just placed in the model, it has an equipment tag of Station Site ST74. So it's asking me which ID do I want to keep. In this case, I want to keep the imported ID, which is in Bomb Manager. Note that this functionality is not only limited to custom parts, this also applies to coded parts or parts that are from the database. Again, it's simply just providing you the capability to associate an unlinked bill of material item with a symbol in your model. The new apply to symbol function in bill of material manager, similar to link with symbol, however, a little bit different. In this case, it will allow you to select multiple records in BOM manager, such as hardware, nuts, bolts, washers, it can be any part number, of course. And it allows you to take those selected part numbers and apply them to a symbol that's already been placed. So it's not actually linking the actual equipment tag or equipment with a bill material item. It's actually appending or adding items, the selected items from bill material manager. So let's take a look at this in action. So I'm going to use an example where we've got a vertical brake switch and I've got the model assembled here. You can see that the bus is connecting to the expansion connector, which then connects to the vertical brake switch. And what I want to do in this case is I want to assign the hardware to all of these expansion connectors. So rather than going to each symbol and adding the part numbers for the hardware independently, separately of each other, I can select a group of symbols and apply selected records from Bill Material Manager. So I'm gonna go ahead and just select those objects. I'm gonna go locate my hardware. So in this case, the hardware is already part of my Bill Material, so I can find it uh, in the list here. I'm just gonna do that really quickly by generating a filter with a, a contains width. And in my case, I'm looking for three-eighths inch hardware that's on my bill of material. 
and you can see the high bus bomb. So here's the, the items that contain uh, three slash eight. And I've identified uh, the Bellevue washer. I want this stainless steel uh, bolt. I want this hex nut and flat washer. So these are the part numbers I wish to associate or add them to the existing symbols. So I'm gonna slide this off to the side. You can see all six again are selected, those bus expansion connectors. And now I'm prompted to adjust any quantities as needed. So for example, here you can see the Bellevue washer. Maybe I want four of those, right? And I want four bolts, four nuts, four flat washers. Assign, the selected items now have those part numbers. So if I look at the symbols, you will now see that material added as additional parts. The new item conflict validation tool allows you to identify and correct duplicated BOM items. So first off, a duplicated bomb item, you'll know that you'll have that condition if you compare one of the description fields from Bill of Material Manager to your output, your Bill of Material report. If the value is different, that's an indication that you may have an item conflict. So if you see that symptom, if you notice that difference, then that's an indication that you should actually run this validation check and it will identify those issues and then it will also allow you to resolve those issues. Now generally, this new function applies to existing users, existing data. You might be wondering how the duplication of the bill material items happens in the first place. And Primarily, there's two workflows that would lead into that result in prior releases of the software. For example, maybe you're dragging, dropping a bill material item from one node to another node within Bill Material Manager. In certain cases, that would uh, trigger that duplication. And if you didn't run the duplicated uh, item report, you wouldn't know that you had that duplication there. The other common workflow was simply renumbering the balloon numbers or item numbers using Bill Material Manager. And in the specific condition where the renumbering of those balloon numbers would result in a duplicated item. We've enhanced Bill Material Manager, those two uh, workflows or functions around that. Now, anytime that uh, duplication is encountered, the software will prompt or display the appropriate uh, message. Let's take a look at how this validation tool works. For example, on my on my low bus bomb, hone in and take a look at this first description here. You can see you've got what we call a non-coded part or a custom part. So this isn't a part from the parts database. I've typed in a description, in this case, a vertical brake switch, right? I've purposely set up this condition for this demonstration, and I know in the back end that there's duplication there because I, I, I intentionally did that. However, if I just go in and, and select that validation, right? Item conflict, you can see. I'll run that validation, and this presents the issues. So it tells me item 100 for my low bus bomb. So I'm on this node, revision zero of my low bus bomb. Item 100, I have some duplication. One record says it's a, a breaker. The other says it's a vertical break switch. And you can see the differences in all of the bill material data manager fields. So therefore, again, uh, just in summary, if your bill material report description fields have a different value than what bomb manager is displaying, use this item conflict to resolve it. You select the record that you want to remove. So I'm gonna go ahead and let's just, for example, say that the vertical brake switch is not the correct record, uh, the breaker is. So I'll select that and hit remove, and it removes it, close bill material manager. So in here, you can see that it is now a breaker. We've added some additional functionality to import drawings. You now have the capability to import title block descriptions from an Excel file. This can be useful when importing legacy drawings. For example, maybe in ProjectWise, you have document attributes mapped to your title block attribute. You can extract that information out of ProjectWise into an Excel file and then import those title block descriptions or those document attributes during the drawing import within Open Utility Substation. Let's take a look at how that works. I'm going to go ahead and access the Import Drawings tool. I'll select the folder containing the DGNs that I wish to import. And here you can see I have a handful of different uh, DGNs available. Import Page Properties. This is the new tool found right here. When we click on that, I can select the Excel file 
that I want to pull data from. I can specify the sheet name and also a starting row. During the import process, should there be any issues with your data uh, not aligning with your Open Utility Substation configuration, you'll see that in the window here. For example, invalid title block specified, invalid page format, invalid page mode, invalid page macro. You have the option, if this list were to be very large, you have the option to save details to a log file, a text file, and you could review that. In this case, I'll just go ahead and hit OK. And now I can choose some of the files that I wish to import. So I'm just going to choose a couple of these schematic drawings here, and I'll complete the import process. During the import process, it's reading that title block information from the Excel file and then importing those values into your Open Utilities substation uh, page descriptions or title block attributes. So for example, the import is complete. I can go ahead and go into the modify page, and you can see this is all the data that came in from that Excel file. Taking a look at the Excel file, where the data originated from. Here you can see that column A has the file name, column B has the page name, and then you can see the remaining columns for your title block attribute information. To enhance the user experience, we've added the ability to remove multiple part numbers from a selection set. That means you can go into a 3D model, for example, you can select multiple connector symbols and then choose to remove the part numbers of the nuts and bolts for all of the connectors that you have selected in the 3D model. Let's take a look at that in action. I'm just going to go ahead and first select my connectors. Here you can see the remove part numbers function. After Clicking that, I'm presented a list of all the part numbers that belong to the selected symbols. There's also a toggle for primary part numbers. If you uncheck that, the primary part number will disappear. In this case, leaving only the hardware items. So for example, maybe I want to remove all of these nuts, bolts, and washers, and then replace it with a different size or maybe a different material. You know, maybe uh, right now this is all stainless. Maybe I want aluminum. Right, So I could use this to remove the part numbers and then use the apply to symbol function in BOM Manager to re-associate new part numbers to those items. And here you can see, going back into device properties, all my hardware parts are removed. We've also added another user experience enhancement, a warning. Anytime a user changes the master units for a file, and if it's not in a line with your Open Utilities substation project options, the following unit warning message will appear. I'm pleased to announce the Place Balloon dialog is now resizable along with a handful of other dialogs in the software. Our parts database URL link has been enhanced. It now supports multiple URL links. However, if you're looking at implementing this, you may need to change the configuration, the field links for your part number table and in your parts database. Finally, the last enhancement, more geared for the database administrators. We now provide the ability to put a project database into maintenance mode. When a project database is in maintenance mode, this alert message here will appear on users' machines preventing them from using or editing any data in that project database. This is especially useful when a database administrator needs to do certain tasks or upgrade the schema of the database. To implement this, it's as simple as going to the project table, adding an extended property called maintenance, and when it's value one, that is what triggers maintenance mode. Anytime maintenance is a value of one, that extended property, that will trigger maintenance mode. This concludes today's presentation. Hopefully you found a couple enhancements that can make life a little bit easier through your design process with Open Utilities Substation. Should you have any questions, how-to questions perhaps, or you just want to check out what other users are saying, feel free to visit us at our product community site under the Open Utilities Substation and Promise eForm. Thank you. Have a great day.